Should we do one of those things? Chip tray? Yeah. Where should we start? Here seems good. All right, we've done a bunch of stuff for the CNC since our last video, but we'll just go through one or two of these things. We're gonna have another episode coming up that is gonna be a detailed explanation of like everything on here, so stay tuned for that. But the first thing we figured out was hard stop homing. Turns out we don't need homing switches. The uh, clear path motors are smart enough to do it on their own. So let's check out how we did that. All right, before we go ahead and rip out the home switches, let's see how accurate they really were. Ooh, that one and a half. That's not great. All right, good news is setting up hard stop homing is super simple in the clear path setup. You just click this button, check the direction of your homing and set the homing speed. And now every time I enable the machine, it homes. There are a few safety concerns here and we'll get into more of that in a later episode. But uh, for now, let's see how well it worked. I'll go ahead and let past us express our enthusiasm for the quality of this home stop homing. 10? A 10. Yeah, sure, come on up. So the next thing we did was work on these Gibbs. Uh, I don't think we talked about this when we first got the CNC, but the Gibbs were pretty rough. Uh, not only were they really roughly ground, but they were also ground to the wrong angle. Luckily, uh, we've got a surface grinder, so let's use that. I'm not gonna lie, grinding this gib was, well, a bit of an ordeal. Now, I'm not sure if it was our complicated measuring process or our funky setup for grinding, but needless to say, it took a few tries. That being said, final result was excellent. I can't tell you how satisfying it is to see this machine actually do some work for us. There's just one little thing that's been bugging me. Um, why didn't we use this? All right, seriously, we got a good opportunity to buy one of these things, so we went for it. Huge thanks to Nate at Steelcrafted for hooking us up. But uh, let's see how it does. So yeah, we're still making these brackets. In fact, I think we ended up making way more of these than we ever thought we would. Uh, in fact, I think we might even have a few in stock if you wanna go get them. Uh, if you haven't seen that video and you have no idea what I'm talking about, here's the card for that. But yeah, if you bought these and you had to wait a while, thanks for your patience. Uh, speaking of those, we've been doing a lot of anodizing still and Ryan's figured out something kind of cool. Uh, if you put regular 6061 aluminum in the acid bath and leave it there, it gets really nasty and probably contaminates your bath at some point. But if you get 6063, no problem at all. Uh, another product we're working on, you might be interested, I showed these quite a long time ago and I've been using them ever since. Little covers for the resin baths for the AnyCubic. Uh, actually, these turn out to be really useful. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna make a few more for myself. If you guys are interested in that, let me know down in the comments and maybe we'll put them up on the store. A lot of you guys wonder what we do on the side. Um, obviously this is not our full-time job because we don't upload that often. <sighs> Sorry about that. Uh, but part of what I do includes a lot of prototype engineering for electronics parts. Uh, and that means that I ended up picking up a reflow oven. Let's talk about that a little bit. So there is a cheaper, smaller version of this Chinese one called the 962A that apparently has a lot of problems, and I just went for the bigger one. The only thing I don't like about it being bigger is that it still runs on 110 volt 
2800 watts, which means you need like a 30 amp breaker in your garage at 110 volt. Not a real standard except for RVs apparently. Huge drawer, it heats very evenly, uh, no problems there. You may notice that I have numbers written on the top of that. That's so that I know exactly which buttons to push because the user menu is completely useless. So it says three, then one, and then four, and then one again. And now it's started. All right, if you've never seen one of these solder paste stencils before, they're super cool. We got ours from JLC PCB when we order a prototype board. And we'll probably do a more detailed video on this in the future, but needless to say, it makes the manual pick and place process a whole lot easier. Speaking of, Ryan's gotta be the slowest pick and place robot I've ever seen. If you're wondering what this little board is for, it was originally designed as a heater controller for telescopes to stop dew from forming on the front of the glass of the telescope. Yay, being astronomers in Florida. But we have other plans for this one. Ryan's made a small, low power drying oven. I'll let him tell you about it. I put it in this little 3D printed enclosure and I'm using this IKEA locker thing. I don't know, we'll link to it in the description. I use it for curing epoxies and drying out 3D printer filament like uh, PLA and ABS, like this stuff. I found myself using a lot of epoxy potting compound that it really likes to dry at about 150 Fahrenheit. Also, if you let it dry at room temperature, it takes a couple days and absorbs a lot of moisture, especially in Florida. Uh, the other thing is that the heating element is just some nichrome wire uh, in these cheap ceramic grill tubes. This oven is really only about 40 watts. Uh, think like a dim tungsten bulb. So the insulation has to be really good, and I'm using two layers of this crystalline insulation board. Uh, it's crazy cheap from Home Depot, like under 15 bucks for a 4x8 sheet. Really easy to cut with a box cutter. Uh, I just taped it in place with aluminum foil tape. Uh, word of advice, make sure your tape is good for whatever temperature you're aiming for. The whole thing only goes up to about 160 Fahrenheit, which is fine because a conventional oven usually bottoms out at about 170. Dehydrating printer filament is usually around 120 Fahrenheit or less, uh, and most potting compounds are more like 145 to 155. So after it sits in the oven for a few hours, we pull it out and we store them in these uh, vacuum bags. You can get these for sous vide machines on Amazon. I'll link to them in the description. Nice part about these is they've got these little one-way valves and you can actually buy a little vacuum pump for it as well. We throw that in there. Ryan also includes these little desiccant packets just in case. And uh, speaking of 3D printing, we may have acquired a few more FDM printers. This was originally a Prusa 2.0, which we upgraded to a 2.5S. Uh, it's actually a gift. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. And uh, we couldn't help ourselves, and we bought a brand new Mark III as well. Highly recommend these printers. Quality, fantastic. Uh, we've only done really PLA so far and a little bit of NinjaFlex, um, but I'll let you know how it does on ABS once we actually get enclosures for these things. Speaking of new 3D printers, somehow we've ended up with another resin printer. <laughs> this one is made by Longer. I've never heard of them as a company, but they reached out to me and decided to send me one for review. I did get this for free, full disclosure, but it's not really gonna change my opinion about it. Uh, I haven't used it at all, so let's put it together and give it a try. All right, now first impressions of the actual hardware seems pretty solid. It's made out of, uh, folded steel and looks pretty rigid. The uh, obvious thing to note here is it uses a pretty good motion rail in there. It's not one of the cheaper ones, so I've got high hopes for that. Uh, its auto leveling system seems a bit different than most. We'll see if that's any easier to use. One thing I'm a little bit concerned with is that's part of its enclosure there. Some assembly required. All right, anybody here that's used a laser cutter before, I'm sure you've seen this type of construction before. It is a little odd to come with uh, kind of a more commercial product like this, but 
yeah, it's in the maker space, so I don't knock him any points for that. One interesting thing though is normally when you put together an acrylic sheet like this, it's glued together. Uh, they didn't include any glue, but they did include these little corner pieces and these kind of little flimsy rubber bands to hold it together. I don't have much faith in this, but I'll put it together as instructed and see how it works. It's not the worst thing in the world, but there is no way I'm trusting these rubber bands to last very long. Uh, and you definitely don't want to walk up to a printer that's just fallen apart overnight. So I'm going to glue it together. But other than that, I think the look is really nice. And of course, I'm out of acrylic glue. So we're going to finish this test with rubber bands and glue it after as soon as I can get some from Amazon. All right, let's install some software. Software looks pretty identical to... Uh all the other software out there. I wonder if they're all built on the same code base. Wow, the slicer is extremely fast. All right, one thing that I think probably will get annoying to me is the removal of this bath means you have to pull these screws all the way off. Uh, the Anycubics you just have to loosen, so it's a bit extra work. Also, this is probably the piece they saved a little bit of money on as well. I think it's going to work quite well, and uh, changing the FEP layer shouldn't be too difficult either. But it's just not as nice as the billet aluminum that the Anycubic is made from. They've also done a nice job trying to seal up the uh, screen here. It looks like they're using sort of a vinyl sticker uh, that goes all the way around. It's one single piece, so that should help some to protect if you got any leaks. Uh, that being said, there are still two holes here. Um, for the bed, so if you do have resin leak, it may very well leak down those holes, so something to think about. First up, we'll test the uh, longer resin. Uh, they're nice enough to send you this tiny little 250 gram bottle, and they give you light brown. Not a, not a great choice longer. <laughs> Well, despite there being four bolts here, I think I actually like this leveling system better than the Anycubic's uh, kind of ball head. And that's because there is no up and down adjustment. You just tell it to go home with a piece of paper on there, keep it flat, and tighten these bolts. Okay, I'm impressed, um, but you know, this is Physics Anonymous, so let's pull this thing apart and see what makes it tick. But first, I've gotta glue that housing together. It's driving me nuts. Thanks, Kat. Yeah, so uh, first pretty interesting thing is this LED array. Um, way more complicated than I would have thought it needed, but um, pretty well built. They actually have uh, all these little lenses on the UV LEDs. Pretty cool. Looks like a pretty well built assembly too. Good heat sink. Um, they actually also put uh, some red glue of some kind on all of the connectors to make sure they don't come loose. I kind of like that. So, yeah, 
the cat seems to approve as well. And as far as the interior components, it uh, looks like they're actually running pretty much all custom boards, which I'm pretty surprised by. At the very least, uh, this one in the back has got the longer name printed on it, and I haven't seen that board before. Um, this control board might not be theirs, I'm not totally sure. It does have a little micro SD card reader built in. Uh, a few USB connections again with the uh, red glue on all of the connectors, I really like that. There is another uh, board here, I'm guessing this one isn't made by longer. Um, that is the display driver. Uh, if you did want to do an upgrade to this printer, you might want to uh, replace this with a quieter fan. The fan's not too loud, but I don't suspect the bearings on this will last particularly long. And it's kind of a small fan, so it does make some noise. And then you've got your LCD touchscreen on the front, which is probably my number one complaint about this. That touchscreen is really not very good. But other than that, uh, really well built. Uh, I like the construction method a lot on this. Uh, they definitely uh, took some care to make sure that all of the connectors stay connected through shipping and all that, so I think that's pretty good. All right, let's put it back together. One more thing I would like to point out is they put a anti-backlash nut on here, which I really like to see. Uh, that, in combination with the high-quality motion rail, uh, those two things are really where you don't want to cut corners on something like this. It's the one moving part in this system and should be pretty high-quality, and they didn't cut corners there, so... I really like to see that. All right, I was just putting this thing back together and noticed something pretty interesting about this LED array. Uh, at first I thought it was just a PCB with a heatsink stuck to the back, but if you notice, the PCB is not made of fiberglass like it normally is. There's just an aluminum plate here with what looks like maybe one of the super thin flexible uh, PCBs bonded to it. So you see it's actually very, very thin, which is great for heat transfer. Well, that was actually a bit of a surprise. I'm not sure what I expected from this little 3D printer. I've never heard of Longer before. It's kind of an odd brand name, but I uh, have to say, pretty impressed. Um, you know, when you make something this affordable, you have to cut corners, and where you choose to cut those corners makes or breaks the product, in my opinion. Uh, and so they, they did cut a few corners. I think the resin bath isn't quite as nice as what you get with the Anycubic uh, and that front touch screen we talked about. But everything else is really top-notch. Um, the motion rails are very good. Uh, the actual LCD that's doing the exposing is very good. The light array underneath looked pretty darn good too. Um, and actually what I thought was gonna be one of my biggest complaints is this orange uh, housing. Uh, it is pretty cheap that they make you hold it together with rubber bands by default. But if you go and pick up some of that acrylic glue for like 12 bucks on Amazon, uh, it's much nicer and much more rigid. And I love that I can film at any angle in it. I've got much more visibility than I do in the Anycubic. And when you're making YouTube videos about 3D printing, it's pretty nice. But I think that's gonna wrap it up. This probably isn't the last uh, resin 3D printer review that I'll do, but we'll see. Uh, I kinda wanna get my hands on one of the Elegoos just to see if we can upgrade it. We get a lot of questions about that with the uh, Photon upgrade, so uh, maybe we'll get one of those in. That's gonna do it, see you guys. I was hoping maybe we could have a little dialogue about that. All right, let's get this out of the way first. Did you die of the coronavirus? Ah, uh, not yet. Um, did you? You turned into a newt, though, right? I, I did. I got better. That's good. Yeah. Before we get to the comments, uh, there's a few other things I want to get to. Uh, we decided that our CNC needed a name, uh, and we're going to leave it up to you guys. So leave in the comments some suggestions for a name, and maybe we'll pick one. Is that a good idea? Oh, keep it clean, guys. You know, over the years, we've gotten a ton of questions about us and what YouTube's like and just random stuff, to be honest. And uh, we're not great about answering those, but we figured this would be a good chance to compile a few of those questions and we'll answer them in the next video. So if you have that type of question, just leave it in the comments below and uh, maybe we'll get to it. Okay, uh, Paul says that draw bar looks suspiciously like the power draw bar from Priest Tools. Very cool. Um, hadn't seen that one before, but it does also look suspiciously like the one from Tormach, which we clearly copied. Yeah, there you go. Uh, regarding Peltiers, do you watch Tech Ingredients? Uh, they made a series of awesome videos about Peltiers. We did see those. Uh, link in the description. Yep. Please make my New Year's wish come true. Make an ATC for the mill. Mike?
Pesci says, a different take on the grinding wheel controversy. Seven episodes ago, make a tool post grinder for the lathe. This episode, take a hand grinder to the things on the lathe. Yeah, that poor lathe. We should probably fix it up sometime, huh? <laughs> we should. A few things, we, we tend to film things out of order, so having one tool one episode, we might not have it the next episode. But, but, but we did have that tool that oh, episode. You just needed to cut off on it. Yeah. Okay, no excuses this time. No excuses. Aquarly says, wow, I thought I was the last lightwave user. You, you probably are, except There's for this guy. There's another one? Actually, there oh, were like four man. in the comments all together, so I think that makes five in the entire world. That's it's amazing. Uh, you guys are learning Blender too, right? Uh, Driftwork says, I'm surprised nobody is giving you crap for not covering your lathe waves while grinding. They didn't? There's that one. Oh. Yeah, that one. Yeah, no, they definitely there's, did. There's those two. Um, he also says, I once left a key in the lathe chuck for an online pick, and I'm still hearing the ghosts of past machinists haunting me. You, sir, know our pain. Yeah. All right, Eddie Towers says, I remember a time when a poor, lonely lathe was given care, love, and attention, being fully restored until it was discovered that it had a crook in the bed. Attempts were being made to repair the machine. Um, something, 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 death metal unicorn. <laughs> These comments, man. <laughs>